There you have it. Uh, the president is done with his statement. A few shouted questions at the end. He chose not to answer them. Uh, he talked a lot about wanting to end this war, says it was always his intention to get out, but then blamed the prior administration, the Trump administration, uh, saying that they hemmed him in to the way that he could get out and that he didn't want to leave. We didn't want to, you know, add more troops in order to stay, and he felt that that was the only option that he had. A lot of interesting comments in here, and I want to bring in General Jack Keane, Fox News senior strategic analyst uh, and former vice chief of staff of the Army and chairman of the Institute of, for the Study of War. Um, General, good to have you with us today. Uh, he said that this was an extraordinarily successful mission with regard to the airlift. Your thoughts on that and overall what we just heard from the president? Yeah, well, certainly he's making a very strong defense of the decision-making process to withdraw all troops, um, and, and quite an emotional one at that. But why don't we all feel good about this? I mean, nobody in America that I have spoken to feels good about anything that's happening here. This is a national disgrace that's taking place here. And, and given the misrepresentation of the facts, the blame game that continues to go on, not admitting the serious mistakes that have been made here, it's likely going to take a congressional commission or a major congressional investigation to determine just who did what and when and hold people accountable, because that's not happening here. A couple of facts. One, it is a fact that the president blew off the military advisors and his intelligence advisors about withdrawing out of Afghanistan. They wanted to stay. The CIA director, his CIA director said, if the Taliban takes over, the significant risk to the United States will be there because of safe havens now back in Afghanistan. So that's true today. That's the risk we have today. Out of the mouth of a CIA director. As it pertains to President Trump, well, I didn't agree with him, his people negotiating with the Taliban. He's blowing off the fact, while yes, there was a date certain, one May, but it was based on what? It was based on conditions. The Taliban had to do what? I read the four-page document that Zal Khalazai, the ambassador who negotiated that deal, when it was a draft document. I read it in a hotel in, in Washington, D.C., just him and me. And I told him it was a surrender document. But here were the conditions. The conditions were recognize and reject, excuse me, not recognize, reject al-Qaeda, enter into a partner-sharing arrangement with the leaders in Kabul. Neither one of those conditions were met, despite the fact that the government in Kabul was forced to give up 5,000 prisoners. So if those conditions were not met, Biden looked at that and just blew those conditions off, just like he blew off the military advice and his intelligence advice, and then set an arbitrary date of 31 October, 31 August. August. And what did that do? That, that denied the Afghan security forces getting intelligence and robust air support to stop the major offensive, which was already ongoing. He's blowing all of that off, misrepresenting what took place, and again, denigrating the Afghan security forces, who suffered 66,000 casualties over these 20 years, 45,000 of which when we stopped ground combat operations. As to the evacuation itself, it was a huge mistake. And that commander who has been identified prominently on Fox, Major General Chris Donahue, one of the most experienced combat commanders we have ever had, you don't think he knows that what he wanted as a responsibility to defend the airfield, that we would have security checkpoints ourselves outside the gate, making certain it was a standoff from the airfield itself? Give me a break here. Of course that's what he wanted. But the president was obsessed with avoiding casualties and didn't want troops out there taking additional risks. That's the feedback that I have. And what did we get as a result of that? Because we outsourced the security of the airfield, and this is very tragic, as we did get the casualties. We had over 200 casualties, and sadly and tragically, 13 of them are our guys and gals. I'm not saying that could have been avoided. But I'm saying if we had the security in place and we were running the checkpoints with the barriers there and everything else, I believe that would have been far better than what our people were subjected to and the horror that they had to go through. There needs to be some accountability here for what is taking 
taken place, and it's not going to come from no. this administration. Well, uh, we know General say. McKenzie said that uh, all we need is the airport. We don't need anything outside the airport. And you didn't have to take care of all of Kabul to get a bigger perimeter around the airport. That was another option that should have been pressed, perhaps, based on what you're saying. General, we're going to leave it there. Um, we know you're going to be part of the continuing coverage as we move forward. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.